Hey everyone, hope everyone's doing okay and staying safe. Got another motherboard review video here for you. This one's from MSI, the MPG X570 Gaming Plus motherboard. And uh, this is actually basically a, I would say probably a tier, just slight, ever so slightly stepped down from other motherboards from the X570 class and from MSI that I've actually done a review for. And I'm going to go ahead and take a quick flip over here, get a little bit of a view over here of the board itself. This board definitely does support third and of course the fourth new 5000 series Ryzen CPUs. Now there's probably also a chance it may even support older class CPUs. Um, they may have, there was a video I actually did go ahead and release where I did have an X570 board and it actually was working with Ryzen first gen CPUs. So that's actually a little bit of bonus. One thing I want to point out here while on the subject, there is a sticker here that does say it's a Ryzen 3000 desktop ready. So I'm gonna take a wonderful guess here, say the BIOS this particular board was probably not updated to support the latest generation. So a quick BIOS update will allow you to do that. And I do know that some MSI motherboards does allow you to do that also without the need of a CPU and I believe even memory. So here's another view of the board itself. This board does have the little CPU cooler that's pretty common with X570 boards. Maybe just a few of them that probably don't. It does have a couple of uh, M2 slots over here. Looks like uh, two of them, one up here for your max speed. That will probably support fourth generation SSDs. And of course your other one right down here that will probably be just be your Gen 3 big deal so obviously you'll be using the one in the top slot so let's go ahead and open this up take some further look obviously a couple of little accessories they do include here this particular board does not have the IO shield uh, built in like some other boards do. This is basically the old fashioned, you connect it to the case and just install your motherboard while it's already there. Obviously don't forget to install this because it does look horrible and can be a little painstaking to actually remove the entire board just for that one reason. Your CD, which many people don't even use anymore. Obviously a little bit of um, quick instructions here for getting the CPU installed. This looks like a little badge you can actually connect on the case itself barcode and some other little like uh, accessories you can get your hands on if, if it was even possible to actually even get video cards that easily. And of course a little uh, you know, thank you over here. Some boards have actually come also with a little piece of paper asking you to join the rewards. So that's another little bonus as well too. I think you can possibly get some rewards for buying motherboards and other accessories. And of course very important, your, your manual right over here. And um, Probably the biggest reason I actually use them for is just to find out where the front panel ports uh, connect on the, um, the connectors actually connect on the board. Included as well too, in terms of cable, you do have a heat sink for your SSD if you decide to use them. Still a little bit of a uh, jury still out there kind of uh, not mind with this because some people actually would say that it does make the SSD um, accumulate more heat as opposed to really reducing the temperature, which may cause throttling. But definitely up to you. The options right here, I guess that's probably why they left it separately. And a couple of pair of SATA cables right over here. And here we are taking a look at the board itself. You can actually see your connectors right over here. Looks like about eight USB ports. One of them is class C, type C right over here. Old little old fashioned PS2 port, which can be pretty useful for facilitating uh, Windows 7 installations if you're gonna go that route. Yes, people are still using Windows 7 these days. Um, right over here, you actually do have the USB 3 front panel connectors, one over here and one over here as well too. Looking on the side, we have a couple of SATA ports. Looks like it's about six of them. Um, I would say most motherboards have actually been cutting down SATA ports through the popularity of uh, M2 slots and the uh, lesser and less use of uh, CD and DVD optical drives as well too. So I've actually been seeing higher tier motherboards with only about basically four SATA ports. Uh, I believe one of my motherboards actually has that. I'm actually only using one for a mechanical hard drive anyway. 
Speaking of SSDs, here's one of your M2 slots right there. And of course, right up there is another one. This will probably be your more um, common user one since that's a gen guaranteed Gen 4. And you can definitely go ahead and use that little heatsink cover that I demonstrated a little bit earlier. Traditional four slots, stem slots here for memory. Your power supply connector right over here as well too. And all your fan connectors for case use are actually down here, looks like four of them. Most motherboard manufacturers have actually been bunching them up as opposed to spreading them all out. I guess this can actually be a little advantageous since they're all down here, but sometimes some of the fan cables you're using may or may not actually reach this area. So you may have to actually depend on some extensions or possibly just rewiring stuff a little bit. But obviously, despite all the fan connections being there, you obviously do have your CPU fan connector hiding over here somewhere. There's another fan connector right over here, usually for a pump, but you can definitely use that for your CPU-related um, CPU or any other case fan. Just go ahead and control it in the BIOS. And right over here, of course, you do have your CPU fan. A couple of heat sinks over here. Of course, there's a fan and heat sink cover in here. Basically, your chipset right over here. So looks like the design of this particular board is pretty much straight down to just get you up and running. Um, the little... Uh, Little perks that other uh, higher tier motherboards have, such as having the IO shield built in and actually looking a little nicer. Um, probably not included in this particular board. This board doesn't appear to have any LED lighting like over here or on the other sides, but no big deal. If you don't need anything too flash, you can always just toss in your own LED, uh, LED lights inside your case, which many people actually do anyway. So this is basically your nice overview of the X570 MPG Gaming Plus motherboard. So why don't we go ahead and get a CPU in here and get it going. And here we are, our BIOS of the motherboard. Everything's been installed. Hope you guys enjoyed that little quick skim installation of the board onto the Be Quiet 500 computer case, a case I've actually had for some time and done a couple of little installations for hardware testing and other little wonderful videos here as well. 
So you can definitely see all the options. This particular board, just little FYI, does support the first generation AMD Ryzen CPU. You can definitely see those notes in this area. Um, I did go ahead and install eight gigabytes of RAM. Unfortunately, I actually put them in the wrong slots. If anyone did ca actually catch that, good eye. No big deal, I'm just using this for a test purpose at this point. So some details you, you can actually see over here, CPU details. Memory, obviously, you can see eight gigabytes at the lowest speed at this time, so definitely go ahead and optimize those if um, your memory chips are obviously you running much higher speeds, like 3200 or 3600 as well. Under storage, I actually do have two hard drives installed. One of them is an SSD, so you see those details in this area. Fan speed, obviously, you can control your fan speeds over here, a bunch of other things. Obviously, I really only have like one two default fans that are installed in this particular case. So these options to actually manipulate the temperatures and what actually triggers the increase in speed can all be manipulated in this area. Under this little help menu, there's a couple of little options you can actually click on that will allow you to, these look like actually little hotkeys you can actually click on that will actually give you some additional access or even do some screenshots. Pretty interesting option. I actually haven't seen this before. It could have just been something tossed in a recent BIOS update, or maybe just this particular motherboard. It seems pretty intriguing. Go ahead and give it a go if it really does catch your eye and does interest you. On the bottom, you actually do have some options here to turn certain things on and off. So if I want to actually go ahead and turn the LAN on and off, you can actually do that. Same thing with the audio sound card and some other options as well too. I did mention before that this particular motherboard does not have onboard LEDs, but it does have the controller. You can actually connect your four pin um, LED control uh, cable there to control the lights that you wanna just go ahead and install some in the case. Over here on the left, you do have the option for M flash and this will allow you to go ahead and plug in a USB device and go ahead and update your BIOS. So I did mention earlier that this uh, BIOS uh, is probably a little out of date and it does actually show up here on their BIOS build date, basically going back to 2020, so definitely about a year old. I believe Ryzen 4th generation came out shortly after or just around this time, so definitely update this if you're planning to use 4th generation Ryzen 5000 CPUs. Go ahead and click on that. Obviously, this is your flash option. I'm going to go ahead and click no at this time. Obviously, it's going to go ahead and reboot the entire system. Favorites, uh, I guess some couple, couple of little hotkeys you can actually set up. And of course, one of my favorite areas, your hardware monitor, where you can go ahead and have a much better clear control of uh, your fan speeds and also the temperatures that are actually associated with it. This actually you can go ahead and control the CPU and of course, every other fan you have in your case. So if you definitely bring these up, you'll start to notice an increase in sound, as you see here, in your fan. I'm going to go ahead and go back here and back on the main screen one more time. I'm going to go ahead and click on this advanced tab, which actually is the area I really enjoy going. Basically all these same options, but much more in detail. So now with the advanced tab over here, I'm going to go ahead and click on settings. You'll see a bunch of a couple little options over here. Click on system status to give you all the current status here. Drives that are plugged in. BIOS uh, version and memory size and other details as well. Going back here on the advanced, some more diff, definitely details here and options for basically just everything that's connected and working with the motherboard. You can actually see here some options here. Interesting, cryptocurrency mining. Going back, some other options, integrated devices here. So you can go ahead and disable your sound card if you actually have a separate one or any other options here you want to go ahead and just change. Clicking on boot, which is pretty interesting. Very, very important, especially if you're going to be booting from either Windows 10, Windows 7, Windows 11, um, using your uh, boot methods in this area. And of course, which device you'll be booting up down here. Obviously, if you're going to go ahead and boot up from um, over here, Windows 10, that's your boot manager. Looks like I was actually incorrect. These drives actually do have something on it. But this is where you actually go ahead and select which device you'll be booting off of. On the security, you do have some couple of options. Obviously, this one's becoming more and more important with Windows 11. You can go ahead and click on this. 
and make sure this security device is actually enabled. I believe Windows 11 will not really allow you to continue installing without some sort of modification. And definitely look out, I'm going to be posting some Windows 11 videos very soon as well too. Moving on to OC, obviously for overclocking, you actually do have some options for CPU ratio changing, um, some other options as well too for memory frequency. And of course, if your memory does support some couple of a built-in settings there or optimized settings for those chips, you'll have those options in this area as well. If you want to actually get a little bit more thorough for voltage and other options for CPUs and memory, all those options are over here as well. Just be really careful, obviously. Be sure you know what you're doing before adjusting voltage, especially you could potentially damage stuff. But other, under, basically under CPU, uh, configuration there's some options here I like enjoy going to basically for overclocking I generally don't really overclock CPUs for the most part so I actually prefer just to keep things at a stock level and also don't really need some uh, sometimes CPUs like to overclock themselves from time to time when there's a demand and sometimes you do have that option to turn that option off as well it definitely does increase the temperature quite a bit and that fan begins to really rev up just below you do have some op further options for your memory and of course your cpu you can actually see those in this area and a little bit further for your memory as well too a lot of options to really assimilate and absorb in this area so definitely check them out if you just actually want to just uh, browse through them to see exactly what it is you may want to change in the future if you definitely want to go back and take care of that this board does have the option to actually save some settings here um, if you actually do, do uh, want to have different settings between one particular CPU or another, or just basically different modes to just go ahead around and play with. Obviously just below, the same option here for mFlash to go ahead and update the BIOS on your motherboard. Over here on OC profile, this is basically the area you would actually go ahead and save profiles for overclocking. When you're actually going to perform different tasks or you just go ahead and just uh, test some hardware out, at a higher speed from time to time. And of course you do have the option to change those on the fly as well too. And of course, once again, the same hardware monitor option, which I enjoy using. And obviously it is the same basically as the easy mode as opposed to the advanced mode. So you definitely see, see all the options. I usually like to really just change the CPU temperatures to actually just be almost like a kind of a straight line. Maybe if you notice that you're um, systems getting a little bit more toasty sometimes when performance are in um, tasks or just uh, playing video games. Um, you can definitely bring these levels up quite a bit. One, ki uh, one particular option here I do recommend if you do have an exhaust fan, definitely bring that up higher to actually vent out all that warm air that the computer might be producing either from the CPU or in many cases the video card. And on top, of course, if you want to switch right back to easy mode, go ahead and click here. You also do have the option to just click on the F7 key to toggle between the two of them. Seems like there's other little options here with the F keys. So go ahead and just check those out as well too. So there's a quick walkthrough here with the bio settings for this particular motherboard. And uh, very similar to other boards I've actually reviewed with the X570 from MSI uh, chipset. And uh, I would say this is probably the slightly lower tier motherboard without all the bells and whistles such as LEDs and a little bunch of heat sinks built in, IO um, shield, and other options as well too. You definitely still do have uh, support for latest generation Ryzen CPUs as well as Gen 4 PCI Express slots and of course the, the wonderful NVMe SSDs that go with it. If you have any questions regarding the setup or basically any details or features this board may or may not have, by all means just let me know. Uh, so definitely just to recap once again, this definitely does support latest generation Ryzen 5000 CPU and I'm pretty sure with future updates and BIOS updates, since this is a fairly recent chipset, it'll definitely be supporting even newer Ryzen CPUs. Who knows what new, uh, new features the new Ryzen CPUs will actually have, possibly DDR5, which has become pretty popular with uh, the newest generation of Intel CPUs, but we'll see what definitely where that goes. The competition between the two of them is actually really getting on. Anyway, I hope everyone really enjoyed this video. Um, try to do my best here to really do a quick uh, walkthrough of the BIOS features and whatnot. Definitely sure to like, subscribe if you enjoyed it. 
And by all means, if you got any other comments or questions, let me know. I'll be more than happy to assist. Thanks again for watching, and as always, be safe.